Good. So thank you for being here today. I tested the presentation with uh, two my of uh, cats. One likely they stayed by the end. The other left after two minutes. So I cannot promise anything. But um, I'm uh, David Selitri. I work in Tigera as a customer success engineer. And uh, um, does any of you recognize these logos here? Okay. Okay. Which one uh, uh, uses Calico in their environment? Okay, so mainly Calico, right? What about Tigera, the big cat in the, in the middle? All right, Wireguard? Okay, nice. So um, this big cat here, I tell you, I love this pointer. Uh, this big cat here is Tigera, uh, is the creator and maintainer of uh, Calico. Um, Tigera provides a, a platform for security and observability. It's a full stack platform. While Calico here, the cat, um, it comes in three flavors, Calico Cloud, Calico Enterprise, and Calico Open Source. And then here, WireGuard is the tunneling uh, protocol, which uh, in Calico, we use it for, for encryption, for encryption of data in transit. A lot of numbers here. What we need to remember is that Calico is the most adopted container uh, networking uh, interface and uh, is used by several companies all over the world. I don't like this slide, but I need to keep uh, marketing happy. Uh, what we need to remember is that uh, it is pluggable with several data planes, so it works with ABPF, IP tables, Windows VPP. Uh, it is fast with a minimum usage uh, of resources and most importantly we provide a granular uh, security uh, policies which means you can deny or allow traffic that goes in and out of your cluster but also inside your cluster among your services and pods. And finally, uh, it is scalable and it provides um, encryption which is what we address in more details today. So uh, WireGuard, so WireGuard tunneling protocol, it is simple, lightweight and performant. Uh, simple and lightweight because it's only 400,000, uh, sorry, 4,000 lines of codes, which compared to OpenVPN, which is 600,000, and uh, IPsec, which is 400,000, you can agree with me that it's fairly small, and it's performant because it uses UDP, uh, so there is a better uh, bandwidth um, usage, but most importantly is a kernel virtual, uh, virtual network interface, which means it works entirely in the kernel space, so there is no copy of packets between user space and kernel. And the key component of WireGuard is the uh, crypto key routing here. So uh, I will address this in more details later, but just remember that this is uh, this is the, the reason why we choose WireGuard for um, encrypting data in, uh, in transit. And it is cross-platform, which means it works in uh, Linux, but also we, uh, works in uh, Mac OS, Android, Windows. However, for non-Linux platforms, it will work in the user space, so the, the performance will be different. And here on the right, uh, there is a benchmark directly from the WireGuard uh, documentation. So I don't know if you have downloaded the, this presentation, but you, I'll, I will give you a QR code later uh, where you can uh, find the presentation. If you click on this picture, uh, you'll be able to see details about how this uh, was achieved. Any questions so far? All right. So there are two uh, many main categories that we identified why you need encryption. So just for security or for compliance? So may, how many of you are looking for um, encryption for, for security? Okay, all right, so mainly for security. What about compliance? Okay, all right. What about for a day off from work? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so regarding um, encryption, so, um, I'll give you an example, so why we need encryption for, for data in transit. So let's say that your cluster spans across a multiple data centers. So you will have some pods on a node in a building and some pods in another node in a building. And let's say that you have an ingress controller that receives HTTPS traffic. Now this ingress controller is the building A 
and then the service that is going to receive the traffic eventually is in the building B. So while the, uh, the ingress controller will receive encrypted traffic, he will 99% of the time send in uh, unencrypted traffic. So this would be in plain text and we will see this later in, the, uh, in a demo. So mainly for this, uh, but also for compliance, so PCI, SOC2, HIPAA, um, they require some, uh, um, you need to guarantee some encryption for that in transit, specifically when you handle credit card um, information. Now, how uh, WireGuard works. So WireGuard is a tunneling protocol, which means establish a tunnel between two peers or in Kubernetes between two nodes. Um, there are some challenges, we are, which is the, uh, mainly the manual configuration that you need to do, uh, well, theory you need to do on each node, and we will uh, see this later in more details. And again, the core component is the uh, crypto key routing, uh, which is a state of art of encryption. What this crypto key routing does, it creates a list for each node that participates in the wireguard. And this list includes the allowed IPs, which are the destination pods. Then you have the public key of the node, of the destination nodes. This public key we used to, will be used to encrypt the traffic. And then you will have uh, the endpoint. The endpoint is the physical IP address of the node, of the destination uh, node. So long story short, when, uh, when you look at this list, if you are sending packets, it will look like a routing table because you, receive, uh, you want to send a message. So you want to send a, a traffic to a pod. WireGuard will look at the destination IP, which is the allowed IP, and say, OK, to reach this guy, you need to go to this endpoint here. So it will look like a routing table. While when you, uh, the, the node is receiving traffic, it will act as a, an access control list, similar to a firewall. So it will look at the allowed IPs, it will check if the destination IP is uh, included in the allowed IP. If it is included, happy days, it will decrypt the traffic. Well, the traffic will be already decrypted. It will send to the pod. If it's not in the allowed IP, the traffic will be uh, dropped. And also WireGuard provides some tools that you can use to, to configure manually WireGuard or to view the, its uh, configuration. And this is an example of uh, the WireGuard list. So on the top, I have details about the, uh, my interface here, uh, my, my node, which is the 10.0.1.30, and I use WG the tool for, to see this information. And I see the public key, uh, private key, the listening port, which is the, this one is the default port. Don't worry about FW, FW mark, it just means uh, it's a way that WireGuard um, uses to avoid routing loops. And then you have a list of peers with their public uh, key, the endpoint, so the physical uh, IP address of the node, the allowed IPs, and some uh, statistics on the WireGuard utilization. So, to explain how this works, I, I made up a story. I hope you, you will like it. One of my cat did not. Um, so, we have John who wants to talk to Mary. So, John needs to send an important message to Mary. But John is in the building A and Mary is in the building 2, uh, building B. So, John uh, calls the delivery person. The delivery person gets the message from John and John gets stopped by Calico. So Calico say, hey, where are you going? I'm going to Mary. Okay, all right, let me see if John can talk to Mary. This is very important. So we see at the source, if John can send a message to Mary. Then Calico say, yes, you can do that. But because Mary is in a different building, you need to go to WireGuard. So the delivery person goes to the, to the WireGuard at the entrance and say, okay, I need to send this message to, to Mary in the building B. I say, okay, oops. <laughs> and uh, so I say, okay, I'll, um, it will scramble the message. So the wire guard will scramble the message, but just because it doesn't have anything else to do. And then it say, okay, now you can go, off you go to the building too. So the delivery person goes to, to the building too. He hits the other wire guard, which understands the message uh, sent from uh, his colleague on the building one. 
and we reassemble the message and it tells the, um, the delivery person that he can go to, to Mary to deliver the message. Then he gets stopped by Calico again. And the delivery person says, why well, your friend in the other building says I can, uh, I can reach Mary. I say, I have no friends, I need to check my own list. And Calico, what we'll do in this case, we'll check if Mary can receive a message from John. So it's something that we check on the destination. So Calico checks the security list and they say, okay, you can do that. And the message gets delivered uh, to Mary. Now, any questions before I explain the WireGuard challenges? Okay, very good. So, so WireGuard needs to be configured manually. You have some tools there, you can create some automation, but you need to create to, to set up this manually on each node. Which, if you have a few nodes, is going to be fine, but if you have hundreds of thousands of nodes, it's going to be a bit, <laughs> a bit difficult to do. And you need to create key pairs, you need to create a virtual interfaces, IP addresses of the, uh, the WireGuard interfaces, but most importantly, you need to constantly update the allowed list. Why is the problem? So, as you well know, in Kubernetes, IPs are ephemeral. So, one pod can have an IP now, it will have a different IP in a few minutes, possibly. So, if you need to do this manually, it's going to be a big problem. And also, because this all works in the uh, kernel space, if a node restarts, all the configuration will be gone. So I say, okay, uh, we, we, so what we decided to do in Calico is to instruct Felix, which is a core component of Calico, to do all of this for you. So Felix will create a key pair, uh, we store the keys, and we share the keys among the nodes, it will keep updating the, um, the allowed IPs, and if a node restarts, it will recreate the, the, the configuration for you. But then we said, okay, um, we still have, we still want you to do something. Otherwise, you will not feel a sense of uh, accomplishment. So we came up with this command. So basically, with one single line of command, you are going to, you are going to instruct Felix to enable WireGuard across the entire cluster. Now, of course, uh, if you need more fine tuning because you want to use a different port or you want to set up an MTU, a uh, different MTU, or maybe you don't want some nodes in, to par participate in the encryption, you can still do so. And we have a dedicated documentation uh, how, how to do that. But if you want to enable WireGuard across the entire cluster, this is the only thing that you need to do. It's one single line of command. So to show you the encryption of data in transit, I, um, I set up a lab. So I have a bastion. Uh, with the bastion, I will connect to my Kubernetes cluster. It's a very simple cluster, two worker nodes. And I will use Netcat to send some messages uh, from John and Mary. And I will use the port 12345. And while I send these messages, I will use TCP dump to see the content on the message in real time. And, uh, and make sure that when I enable WireGuard, I will no longer be able to see the content of the message. Uh, yeah, again, so it would be the, the same path. So John is the, in the worker one, while Mary is in the worker two. And I will, uh, um, I will show you when, what happens when WireGuard is disabled and when, what happens when WireGuard is enabled. Right. Okay, so five windows here. On the left, I will open, um, I will exec into John to send some messages, and I will use TCP dump on the node where John is hosted, while on the right, I will have stuff related to, to Mary. So uh, right now, I have John uh, with this IP address uh, on this node, which is my worker one. So I need to uh, SSH into the bastion first.
Okay, from here I will exec into John. Here we'll do the same for Mary. And here I will start the CP dump. Oops. On the worker one. So with this TCP dump command, what I'm doing is just sniffing packets on port 12345 with the minus capital A, I'm just looking at the content of the packet. So I will see the actual data and I'm grabbing for hello, which uh, of course I will include in the message that I will send across um, using netcat. And here I will do the same for, for Mary, which is hosted in the worker two. Okay, so now we'll start the uh, netcat server. It doesn't matter who starts it. So listen port one two one two three four five, and here from Mary, what I will do is start netcat and John IP address port one two three four five, and then I'll send some messages. Hello, John. There we go and hello Mary. So as you can see, I don't know if it's clear enough, I'll uh, try to make it clearer. So here, this uh, using TCP dump, I'm actually able to see the content of the message. And remember, these are in two different nodes. So this is what we are trying to achieve. We don't want to see the content of the message. So what I will do now will enable WireGuard across the entire cluster. And there we go. Is the uh, same command uh, that I showed you in the in the slide before. And what Felix is doing now, it's is creating the keys. It's just changing keys and uh, is creating the WireGuard list for all nodes. So now I'll send messages again. And you can see that I'm no longer able to see the content of the message. So this is what we are trying to achieve with WireGuard. Any questions? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It comes down to the uh, resources that you have available in your cluster. So what uh, Calico does, it will use Taifa as a proxy between uh, the API server and uh, Calico nodes. So let's say that you have, I don't know, 1000 nodes, you probably will have I will give you just a, a round idea. I will have, I don't know, 100 or 200 Taifa. You will not have uh, 1000 Calico nodes talking directly to the one API server because that would be too much traffic. So Calico nodes and for it to change all of this, you will, uh, you will use that. Calico nodes will talk to Taifa and then only Taifa talks to the API server. This is how uh, scalability works in, uh, in Calico. So but it, again, it comes down on what you have in your class, the resources that you have in your cluster. Any other question? Yeah? What about SSH Say it again? SSH we have only a small package now, how to just do this, increase it again, or just let it go like one half to a uh, What do you mean exactly? Can you give me an example? Uh, I got the servers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
not for configuration. Okay. Uh, provider service uh, is an HTTPS service. Yeah. Uh, so the other consumer service uh, will do something with this service uh, via the ingress traffic. Yeah. I need to enable WireGuard uh, computing uh, feature to recognize the conflict in uh, traffic between the consumer and the uh, provider's service. Okay, so uh, I, I think I got your question. I mean, um, let me know if I understood it correctly. So you want to know if you can basically enable or disable WireGuard on specific workload? So at the moment, uh, you can only um, uh, enable it on the, um, on the cross, the entire node, because the encryption is happening on the node level. So any traffic that is leaving a node to reach another one, it will be encrypted. So there is no this uh, fine-grained um, uh, option, let's say. And also, only traffic, inter-node traffic is encrypted. So traffic inside the node itself will not be encrypted. There are several reasons. First of all, it can be a headache because you have a lot of tunnels there. But also, uh, if you're worried that uh, data can be sniffed inside the node because maybe a user has root access, then maybe you may have different problems there. So, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's about this. Uh, I don't know if that answers to your question. Okay, but if you have any follow-up questions, you know, you can uh, approach me. If I don't have an answer, I'll ask our uh, solution architects to, to provide an answer for you. But generally speaking, it's note-to-note. -note. It's still pod-to-pod, -pod, so about the, the idea is that you either enable or disable WireGuard on the node. And you don't need to enable WireGuard across all nodes. It's up to you. Like with the, the, single, the single command that I showed you, enable it across the cluster. But if you don't need encryption specific nodes, you can just disable it. And uh, um, when traffic goes across these uh, nodes, it will just not be encrypted if there is no need. And uh, this is pretty much it. Uh, just to give you a, an idea of how a Calico security policy looks like, this is just an example, okay? And this is coming to open source as well. Not the UI, but you will have tiers. I don't know uh, how many of you have created policy, uh, policies in Calico. Are you familiar with Calico policies? Very little. Okay, so with Calico policies, you can allow or deny certain traffic from to your cluster or inside your cluster. And what we are introducing is tiers. So um, a way to, to say, okay, for the platform team, I give you them a tier that will be able to create policies for the platform. And then each maybe namespace will have his own tier and you can create policies all over there. But again, this is just an example. Uh, exactly. Uh, so yeah, we, we call it security policies, but it's the same thing. Yeah, it's it's a way to basically create IP tables rules or eBPF rules to allow deny or log traffic. But yeah, you you're one hundred percent right. And all right, so from uh, this QR code, uh, you'll be able to download the presentation. Uh, but also, I um, I create I, I I provided you some instructions to replicate the demo on uh, on your environment. So if you have a test environment and you want to do a demo similar to what I showed you, uh, there are some instructions there. And I also have uh, two books left for security observability. If so one of you wants, and some pants, uh, <laughs> and a t-shirt, but then I will, need to, I will need to go naked, so I still need this today. And uh, yeah, that's it. And um, here with this QR code, instead, you can leave a feedback um, to me, to my t-shirt, or to the presentation, or Calico. And any suggestion or feedback is uh, well uh, welcomed. So thank you very much.
Uh, we have one last question. Yeah. To, to which extent is uh, your solution uh, really available and where does the commercial plan start? It's really up to you. You can use Calicope. Um, we have big, very big organizations that use Calicope and source across thousands of nodes. So yeah, there is. You have uh, the Tigera solution with Wagon on, on top of it? Uh, yeah. You can say so, yeah. We add some extra features, so observability, uh, what I showed you, so you'll be able to see the traffic across the cluster, uh, you'll be able to see policies. Of course, with the commercial solution, you will have support, while for open source, you have the community, which is a big community, by the way. But uh, yeah, we also build some security features like uh, WAF for container threat detection. So there are just more features, but the, the basic, what I showed you today is for open source. Uh, you can create security policies in open source. Um, you can enable WireGuard. There is much more. There is also HEP to protect uh, non -Kubernetes, traffic among um, non-Kubernetes hosts, so like VM or bare metal servers. That uh, traffic that goes to the Kubernetes cluster, so there is uh, there is more there. Thank you. And all right, that's it. Uh, I think it was pretty fast. So <laughs> you have time for some coffees and and anyone wants the book? I will take one of it. Yeah, uh, I have only two guys. Uh, I might have another one, but in Ireland, so it's going to be a long try. <laughs> but in here there are some pens, though. There's one question regarding WireGuard. Does it also support PKE so that you could have for the nodes basically that central authority to say that you can add it? Right? If you're on-premise, you know your RPs, but okay. if you would now to have a worker in cloud and you want to ensure that not uh, a non-authorized worker node is being added to your cluster? Okay. Uh, uh, that's a good question. I, I actually don't know. I will uh, I will ask this, a solution architect to provide okay. this answer. So maybe we can connect if yeah. it's okay. And I, I'm not sure how this works. To be honest with you, I try to scan, but it gives me just a code. I asked. Uh, no, I think uh, you need an actual device which they provide from here. I asked. Uh, I said, is there any? That's what they told me. So yeah, okay. Uh, it's easier just looking up the name on. Yeah, probably. LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, okay. Second here. Oh, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it might take a while because I have a few requests today. I, it's, but not, it's not urgent. I, I was just curious. See, so so I, I'm yeah, looking I'll, I'll um, around confidential computing. So basically protecting now the pod against your cube admin when it was still disinterested. Ah, okay. That, okay. That's I'll why I'm asking for the, for the PKE because in our solutions a lot, like for the underlying infrastructure, yeah. you still want to have the traffic only for trustworthy nodes and then build basically... Workloads in the Workloads teams on top. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very good question. I'll, um, but just uh, remind me the question over the message, so we we'll remember, and I uh, will follow up with you. Okay, Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah.